Okay, so welcome everybody. My name is Diogo. We are going to talk about headless e-commerce with Udu and Wusterfront. Uh, so as I said, I'm Diogo Duarte, CTO of ERP Gap. The ERP Gap, we are Udu partners for the US and UK. We're doing Udu implementations mostly since 2010, and we are specialists in e-commerce, counting and manufacturing. Now, the first thing is uh, to understand uh, the difference between a traditional e-commerce website and a headless system. So uh, being an Udo implementat implementation company, we've been using Udo for e-commerce, which is says with lots of our customers. Uh, but when those customers, they, they grow or they, they want to grow their e-commerce channel, then we start facing some difficulties uh, that are related really with the architecture of the system. Udo is a great uh, ERP and we, we love it and we, we use it and, and it's, it's the main focus of our business. But the fact is that if you're doing e-commerce, you want to be able to change the, the front end easily. You want to be able to add additional or change additional services. <clears throat> and all of that is really much more difficult if you're doing uh, a monolithic system like Udo or WooCommerce or Magento, you name it, there are lots of them. And what you get usually it's an e-commerce platform that has its own templating framework. It has uh, its own data model. And so it's all in one system. And if you want to change something, you uh, are going to be um, you will always need to understand the the full mechanism itself and you don't have the chance of decoupling uh, the front end from the back end. And so the main advantage of using headless is that you build the front end, you build an API for connecting, in this case with Udo, but you can have other systems like CMS, which would be a, a usual one, a search engine authentication and and so you can build the front end more uh, for several devices even uh, not only one uh, not only one front end that serves mobile and serves desktop but you can also have uh, native mobile applications you can have kiosks there are several uh, touch points nowadays these companies need and if you're building on top of an API, you're making it easier to uh, promote adding additional layers into your system, right? And so this also makes it easier for you to change one of those parts and makes also uh, the, the, the several teams being focused on what they are doing. The front-end team will be focusing on the front-end, the back-end team, will be doing their work without concerning with the front end. They just have to keep the API according to the spec, right? And so that's the biggest advantage. But then why Vusto front? Uh, when we started this road, we we were looking for obviously an open source uh, Vusto, uh, source front for connecting to Udo. It's really a separate system. Uh, and Vustor Front is a big community. There's lots of integrations for backends, for CMS, for lots of different uh, components. Then you have the Storefront UI. This is really the UI library that Vustor Front bases. And it has uh, atomic design with lots of things that will get you started uh, and will uh, cut. Uh, the start time a lot. So if you go into documentation for Storefront UI, you will see uh, there is a TN here, there's a Figma file, and you can start by customizing this Figma file and then changing a couple of things like the basic colors and uh, the font face and the so, uh, color palette, typography, uh, and you get immediately a unique UI without major work and this is a, a great thing really then 
yes, the true freedom of um, any system is based on the ability to switch any of its components. Not only the fact it is open source, of course, being open source promotes this, but uh, you can really connect with other systems that are not open source, for example, CMSs. You don't want to host your own CMS, you can just use a paid version, a software as a service, CMS, headless CMS, of course. And there are already lots of connectors you can use. And you can even switch Udo if you don't like it, right? Of course, uh, we think it's a great solution, but you could, after, uh, you know, each, each company is different. So you could, at some point, think that it's not the solution for you. And all the work that you have built is not going to be thrown out the window. Uh, like if you were in a monolithic system, that's what would happen, right? So that's really uh, a great uh, a great uh, reason to choose the booster front and that's why we decided to build the integration now how does it work uh, so obviously you have an html browser where the, your clients are then you have Next.js, which is really booster front is really just a Next.js application it uses a middleware which is uh, an ogs http server and then it connects with Redis for caching. And what happens is that each time the browser calls Nuxt, Nuxt is going to uh, query Udo through a GraphQL interface that is uh, based on a Udo Community Association module. And it's going to collect data about your products, about your catalog, your categories. Uh, all the data is stored in Udo. Nothing gets stored in Nuxt, right? So what we can is cache of course and we can invalidate those cache keys but we don't store any of that data that does not belong into a do uh, and so uh, as you do that connection with do from nox you can also do it with any other system like the cms or uh, like the search or whatever component you want to add that vusto front already has right and this makes it very fast so in ready side we cache full HTML pages, but we also cache some of the GraphQL queries in this new version that we have released uh, this week. So advantages, uh, what the first obvious advantage would be the performance. This is a cache first uh, option. We cache everything that is possible to cache. So you can have, you can scale your uh, booster front servers and leave Udo in a different size uh, because uh, the performance will be really uh, related with the caching and related with the web layer, web servers that you're using. Um, another big advantage, if you're using a connector, which is something usual we see in some of our customers, like WordPress connector to Udo or Magento connector, it makes uh, it makes everything a bit complicated because you need to synchronize a uh, data model that is not so small. You have customers, you have products, product categories, promotions. Then you might have uh, different languages, and all of this is very complicated. And so we all know if you're doing this type of work that maintaining a sync is really a pain. And we have some customers that use the connector, they switched over to Vusto front and it's what really, it was really a relief for them, I can tell you. Uh, then, of course, the multiple touch points that require an API pro, uh, first approach. So nowadays you can have a native mobile, PWA on top of uh, front UI also allows PWA, so that's an easy way to go. Um, and well, there's lots of things, uh, even AI, for voice, there's a lot, there are lots of different touch points nowadays, and so it, it it really makes sense to have an API first approach. Then uh, making a better developer experience, as I'll show you, you get a GraphQL interface where your front end developers will have all the documented endpoints, and they will not need to be constantly asking for documentation to the back end team. Uh, so that's a great, a great plus. It makes the work between the two teams much easier. And also, 
uh, this already uh, uh, this something already mentioned, which is easier to switch between components. That gives you agility. And for e-commerce projects, agility is very important. Like if you assist it, like to a Black Friday, you know you have to have promotions in place, uh, landing pages, uh, lots of things, uh, moving lots of different moving parts, and so you need agility. Uh, of course, not all are advantages, and, and I, I'm not uh, referring them to here, but I would say the first thing is that there is a, a I wouldn't say a proper size of company to do uh, headless commerce, but uh, if the company, I would say ODT is a company that has a very big commitment with e-commerce or uh, it's a company that has uh, different teams for probably for marketing, for content, for uh, uh, front end and back end, right? And so that's the sign that you really need to have a headless uh, e-commerce system and it's going to make your work easier. But if you are just a small company, you just want to spin up a web shop, very simply well just use Udo. Udo it's great the website module from Udo, especially version 16 it's much faster than it was um it's not a headless e-commerce as i said um but um, it's it's really good for smaller uh, shops right so uh then this is the structure of the repositories and uh, sometimes uh, you, this can confuse people, but well, this is the Vusta Front API. Vusta Front will do API, which is hosted on this uh, on this link. This is the release V1.5. Now, this is the template. The template, it's a template website that uses uh, like a boilerplate, right? That you can build on top of and uses Storefront UI. Then these are the Udo modules. They are uh, open, totally open. They are already in version 16. It was also pushed this week. And and this is the, the Vusto Front Docker repo. It's the easiest way for you to try out Vusto Front. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So I'll pull up my, my shell. This is what I have here. So if I just use code here show you I'm in Vizio Studio so this is the Docker Compose we have Vusta front server here then we have Udo server we have the database server which is a Postgres 14 and we have Redis so all parts are here there's an end file uh, pointing to some of the configurations you can play around with it so that you can understand how it works there's a backend base URL. This points to do if you're hosting on a private network, you might want to link directly to the local machine. But let's just get this rolling. So I'm just going to do uh, Docker Compose up. It's going to start the build. It's building the containers as we're speaking. So I'm going to use the log so that you can see what is happening. So uh, Machines are waking up, the containers are waking up, and now one part of the code, I'm just installing the GraphQL Vusta front uh, modules into Udo. That takes a while. And after we have this, then Vusta front, which is here on the top, we should see it already. Uh, it, is, it is already started. So you see, he starts, of course, he's trying to connect with Udo. Udo is not there for him. And so we have to wait for Udo to be available. And as this is rolling, it's installing dependencies for the code. This is already the version 16, as you might see. And so now we can just, well, still have to wait a bit. But yeah, what's going to happen is we'll do a GraphQL Vusta front a module depends on OCA Vusta front uh, GraphQL uh, um, GraphQL module, 
and it just builds some queries around the data model existing in Odoo for the website module. So we use the same data model for products, uh, web categories, websites. You can publish multiple websites. You can use multiple languages on your websites. We have customers using different websites for different uh, countries and different languages, all on the same code base. Uh, you all can also have one big website and just with one domain and, and then uh, having different languages on that. And and we have both cases. So now Udo should be available. Uh, it says it's running on 8069. So just let's try localhost here, 8069. And we'll see Udo coming up. This is the community version, but uh, well, most of our cases we even use the enterprise. And so if we can just log in here, so we get our Udo server running. And okay, there we go. And here, let's use Vulstar front for 3000. And there you go. So if I just query something here, you'll see it's moving there. And this is taking all the information from Udo. You see Udo replying to the GraphQL endpoints here. Uh, we can go into the GraphQL VSF, I think it's VSF slash GraphQL GraphQL VSF, let me see. Okay, I got it. So there you go. So this is uh, where your front end team will be able to just go into the documentation and, and understand uh, what he can use, right? And here you can even test your queries. So if I stretch this up, you'll see we are just querying for products and you can decide what other fields you want to see here. So we have this plain name, SKU, slug, and maybe barcode, I don't know. And then you can just press play. So this is available for your uh, front-end developers. They don't even need to know anything about to do. Uh, you have your queries, you have your mutations. And then uh, we have Redis working here on the same plane. So if I just stop here and I do Redis dash QE, uh, of course, Redis is querying not on my local, this is a container. So if I do cur, uh, PS, You'll see we have Redis here. It's publishing 6379 into my local host. Uh, Postgres is not being published to my host machine. But yes, you have the 3000 for Next, Vusta Front, and you have 8069 for Udo. So now let's use the Redis clip um, here. And let's just keys. Let's get all the keys here. So if I start going to uh, my categories and I start querying for uh, different categories and different products. First time he has to connect to do, but then he loads things in the cache and you'll see the the keys are getting loaded here. So we had this here and now we have all these. And so this is how now if we use one of the previous, it will be much faster. Right, and and yeah, of course, uh, out of the box, uh, Starfront uh, UI already has a very good uh, performance. But depending on the customizations that are made, probably will need to uh, fine tune the performance. Right. So yes, that's uh, I guess that's that's uh, what I wanted to show on this uh, session. And well, um, I'll be available for any questions. If you end up having any question or doubts, just email me at diduarte at erpgap.com or go to our website and contact us directly. And well, thank you and have a, a great day, everybody. Mm -hmm.